Okay, so how to run Vampire Hunters? I'm gonna be addressing both Rosario and Espino in this one, so just sort of a combined video. I don't think it's worth making two separate videos because these will be pretty short. Uh, it's really just a few sets, a few different runes, and yeah, that's about it. But yeah, starting out with Rosario, so this guy is a bit more PvE oriented, but you can still use him in PvP. And he, after doing some testing, uh, if you haven't seen some previous videos, I've done a damage test, I've done uh, various other tests, play days, the spinner debut, stuff like that, so you can check those out. I'll also link them in the description. Uh, but for the runes themselves, so Rosario sort of has two different ways you can build him. So, uh, first of all, uh, there is a build if you want a short-term short DPS, so I'm talking about doing damage and finishing a, a run in like 20 seconds or so. And uh, there's the long DPS route where you are doing damage for 35 seconds or more. Uh, that one should get a different build compared to the first one because uh, for the first one, uh, as you know, he has a rage mechanic in his passive where... Uh, he attacks for 15 seconds uh, with his normal abilities and he goes into range mode for 20 seconds after that and uh, basically his attack speed is doubled, uh, he receives less damage and stuff like that. Like that. So uh, there's a reason why you want different builds for different users. So if you want him to do short term burst DPS, uh, I would recommend going for sort of a attack speed heavy build. So. Uh, this is of course assuming you're not gonna make use of that rage for too long, so stuff like Kairos maybe, uh, Path of Growth, Expedition, stuff like that. Uh, dungeons where you don't take more than like 20 seconds to beat them, uh, you will want to go for a sort of an attack speed heavy build. And I would say for attack speed heavy it's something uh, like this, maybe? The sort of more attack speed heavy uh, closer to the 300 cap uh, because he will not be getting the double attack speed most of the time and this way he can just hit more abilities in a short amount of time get more defense breaks on there and just make use of that uh, first skill a bit more and if you're going for long uh, term DPS so if you're fighting for 35 seconds or more I would recommend going for sort of a rage or a fatal setup so uh, right now this is the one I'm using and I would say either Rage or Fatal both sort of work because they're sort of the same. One gives crit damage, other gives Fatal, but really there's no pressure to use one or the other. You can even go Triple Blade if you're really lacking crit rate. Uh, but basically just standard attack set and uh, for the stats that you to focus on. Uh, when you're going for a short-term dungeon DPS, uh, you should put more focus on attack speed, so stuff like attack speed, uh, regular attack, crit, rate, crit damage, and uh, leave some room for a bit of accuracy if you are able to do so, because he does have defense break on his basic attack and one of his skills. If you're going for long uh, dungeon DPS, so stuff like uh, fighting for 35 seconds or more, you should put more focus on the regular damage stats over attack speed because uh, for the long, uh, longer fights you don't want to have that much attack speed since you will be maxing out usually and having more than 150 is definitely not needed but if you can get it a little higher it will not hurt you that much. So yeah for that you try to focus on regular damage so stuff like attack, crit rate, crit damage then think about doing some additional attack speed and accuracy. And uh, for sort of a third bonus option, if you are a cliff user, this mostly applies to cliff users, uh, you will be able to get him into melee range uh, really easily compared to Orbius or Kinos. So if you do plan on using that, uh, you can get him easily into melee range and you should put more focus on attack speed and accuracy regardless of which build you do. Uh, because that way he will be able to use those melee attacks and as you know when he uses melee attacks he has a chance to activate the second part of his passive and this uh, attack uh, gives the chance to uh, land a defense break on the enemy. This means that instead of running with like a level 1 or level 2 defense break from one of his skills you are sometimes able to land maybe even level 4, level 5 defense break because this ability will just activate a lot like every 
two or three seconds, depending on the attack speed that you have. So yeah, uh, more focus on attack speed and accuracy if you're going melee or a swift set. Uh, and regular damage with a little bit of attack speed and accuracy if you're going for uh, this long-term DPS build. And now for Espino, uh, very similar to Rosario, he also has sort of two different builds you can go for. And the reason for that is because these units uh, have some special abilities on their basic attacks. And all units that have basic attack uh, special effects sort of can be built different ways because... Uh, you either want to make use of that basic ability or not. So for Espino, it's very similar to Rosario, except the defense break uh, is changed for a strip. So uh, depending on the use uh, you're looking for. So if you're looking for just pure damage, uh, you have stuff like strips, you have stuff like a crowd control. Uh, you just want to go for, for pure damage. Uh, in that case, I would recommend going for a regular damage dealer build, so like... Rage Blade, uh, Fatal Blade, uh, you can go Triple Blade, or even just a Rage or Fatal and Broken set, as long as you have the good stats from it. Uh, then you can go for a second build, uh, which is more oriented on doing a lot of strips. So for example, if the stripper you have is very lackluster, or if you don't bring any strippers at all, like I like to do into some PvP battles, uh, you can actually just go for a more attack speed heavy build and that way uh, you are able to make use of that first skill and as you know whenever he uses the skill in melee range he has a 25% uh, chance to activate the follow-up and the follow-up has a 24% chance to remove a beneficial effect so this way he will be taking less damage uh, from the enemies because both this ability and the follow-up ability will uh, reduce damage taken by 30%. Uh, this means that the damage reduced is only reduced when you're in melee. If you're attacking from range, you take full damage unless you're using one of the skills. So keep that in mind. Uh, and yeah, if you're going for this more of a strip-oriented build, uh, do consider going for a swift set and higher attack speed. And for runes themselves, uh, very similar to how Rosario was, so if you're going for pure damage, just stack those damage stats, uh, like attack, crit rate, crit damage, and uh, put a little bit of use on accuracy and attack speed, because he does have abilities that need accuracy, and uh, attack speed will also help him not only do more damage, but uh, eventually activate the basic attack passive once or twice. Uh, and if you're going for strips, of course, put more focus on those miscellaneous stats. So go for a bit more attack speed heavy build, uh, put more focus on accuracy over damage. So uh, if you're using as a primary stripper, you should be stacking attack speed and accuracy mo mainly. And after that, of course, more regular damage stats. So attack, crit, crit damage, because he does have a self attack buff. Uh, which allows him to do a lot of damage with his abilities and his passive also has a multiplier on his attack whenever he removes an effect so the more effects you remove the more damage you will do and that way you are able to strip more do more damage and just keep grinding his abilities even more and you also of course reduce the damage taken because uh when attacking melee he reduces damage and when using the follow-up ability he also uh, reduces the damage so yeah Two different builds for both of these monsters and it mostly depends on how you are using him. Of course for Espino as well, uh, if you are a cliff user you will have a little bit more use uh, from an attack speed build, especially if you're lacking strips there. Uh, if you're using a ranged summoner like Orbia or Kina, uh, it will be a bit hard to get him to attack from melee because you either need to be on top of your opponent or uh, whenever you're attacking opponent, you have to pretty much be so linked to this unit. So he uses uh, the ability that dashes towards the enemy and pretty much not move. Because the second you move, uh, when your attack is set to the whistle right here, uh, the unit will move with you. So whenever you move, uh, if the unit was attacking melee, you will, of course, uh, push him away towards you and uh, he will no longer be attacking melee and in order to attack melee, let's say this was my opponent, uh, if you're an Orbia user, you would be shooting from maybe this range, uh, same with Kina. Now if you want uh, Espino to attack from melee, you will have to pretty much be on top of your opponent and hitting that way and as a ranged user, you're a bit more squishier, unlike Leaf. 
you really don't want to be going uh, balls in into that mosh pit of damage and yeah it will just prove more trouble uh, when fighting that way so yeah these are pretty much uh, the two opinions on how I would build the units I hope it helps you a bit and yeah see you in the next one